Why don't you humble yourself under the hand, mighty hand of God that you might receive grace from this wickedness that you're living in. Don't you understand? Your life of sin has made you an enemy of God because you, you do not fear God. You don't live for Him as a, as a godly woman, a righteous woman. That's what God made you for, not to live like this, not to, not to be some sideshow. Not to be a sideshow. No, you weren't created for that. You're living in the flesh. Your flesh. Not for your flesh, no. For the spirit. There's a spirit. There's a spirit man, an inner man. The place where God wants to make you a mother, a sister. He wants to make you a, a, a humanitarian. Instead, you're you're, you're devil. You're devilish. You're serving the devil. Yes, you are. You're living for yourself. You're living for sin, sexual morality. That's what it's all about out here, isn't it? Because I'm wearing this. Yeah, it's sexual perversion. No, bro. You don't understand how guilty you are. You're guilty. And you guys don't fear God. You guys understand that you're going to stand and give an account of your perversion, your ungodliness, your lewdness. You know what it is? It's lewd what you're doing. What's going to happen in your, when you live in lewdness? You're going to be the enemy of you God. That's the flesh. Lewd. Lewd. What is, what is lewdness? No, because it's you, you not wearing any clothes everybody. coming out here. It's just because you God's not going to accept you on your terms. Well, Who makes the rules, God or you? I don't make the rules. I'm giving you the rules. Either. I know. I'm, no, I'm a messenger no, of the so rules. You don't make the rules. So what is the rule? What is the rule? And Adam and Eve didn't the, teach us this the, shit. Ru the rule, Adam the rule is, 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 to live, is to live like Adam Jesus Eve. Christ. And yeah, Adam and Eve covered their bodies up with animal skins. No, but listen. You're, you're enticing your neighbor and your sin. You're no, living in sexual bro. morality. Yes, it's you are. Because you're, just you're not gonna, fearing God. What is God going to do to you? That's what I'm concerned about. No, God, God will cast your soul into hell. God will cast your soul into hell. If you turn, yes. But you're not turning right now. What are you doing? You're in. You see? See, this is the problem. You have anger in your heart. You have anger in your heart because you don't know what the fuck. Why are you angry with me because I tell you the truth, huh? Because you're guilty. You're guilty. You need love. Hey, I broke God's law, but I trust in my simple ways. Hey, look, it's it's not going to help your situation. Your situation is dire. Your situation is desperate. You're in need of repentance. How do you repent? How do you, hey, don't touch me. Don't touch me. The cops, are, the cops are right there. I'm not going to fuck where the cops are at. That's your where problem. You're not fearing God. God the cops are you're going to fear God. The fear the Lord. The Lord has power to cast your soul into hell. Fear the Lord. And fuck you. Okay, that's fine, but I bless you. I say God bless you with a new heart. You need a new heart. A new spirit. You need a new heart. A, 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 a kind heart. A spiritual heart. Why do you guys want to live in the flesh? Why do you guys want to do what the devil wants you to do? Violence. You guys are full of violence and hate and anger. Be full of Fuck life. You. Where's your patience? Why do you don't love me? You don't love me. Why don't you? Why do you hate me? Why do you hate me without a cause? What evil have I done to you? What evil have I done to you? Because you just speak up some stupid ass shit. <laughs> I'm trying to warn you. Some stupid ass shit. You're gonna get yourself in trouble living in sin. There's police sitting right over there, man. The Bible? The Bible is the word of God. It's the truth of God. Fuck you. Fuck you. Hey, you can curse me. I bless you, young lady. You're obviously, you know that God is against you in your sin. You know that God has convicted you. God. God is calling you out of your wickedness. What's going to happen? You're going to end up in hell. You're going to end up in hell. No, don't go to hell. That's what happens to sinners. That's what happens to sinners. They end up in hell. I don't want you to go to hell. If you're really honest, my Come on, man. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? The cops are going to come over here and drag you off to jail right now. What's wrong with you? So you're, you're, you're vandalizing property. Yes, you are. I know that's your problem. You're not understanding that you're held accountable for this night. I want you to have mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Yes, so do and so act as those who be judged by the law of liberty. Mercy is without judgment to the one who shows no mercy. Remember that. Mercy, judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Hey, if you would humble yourself, God could give you mercy. You know, humble yourself. No. No, you're continuing to be angry. And you hate me, the messenger of God, the one who loves you more than anyone else out here. I love you more than these people out here who hate you and want to use you. They don't love you. Your friends don't love you. They hate you. They're your, you're, they're your party partner. They're not your, they're not your brother or sister in Christ. They're not out for your good. No. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good character. Did you know that? Evil communication. Ungodly speech. The Bible says if anyone does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine that accords with godliness, he is proud and knowing nothing but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words for which comes envy and strife and revilings evil suspicions and men of corrupt minds who are destitute of the truth 
who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such turn away, the Bible says. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, it is certain we can carry nothing out. But having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. Why won't you be content? No, I'm preaching right now. Talk to them if you want. I'm content. I'm content with the Lord. You're not content. You want to live in sin. You want beer. You want sex. You want drugs. You want pride. No, you guys, you guys are the enemy of the preaching. And you're in danger. Yes, you are. You're the enemy of the preaching of the word of God. The Bible says, the Bible says, if they don't hear you, they don't hear me, Jesus said. They don't hear No, no, if you're against me, then you're against Christ. That's the bottom line. Well, 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 then quit acting like it. You know them by the fruits. A good tree does not bear bad fruit. A bad tree does not bear good fruit. Get on, get on which side of the fence. Either be a persecutor, be a persecutor, or a brother, or a partaker in the ministry of Jesus Christ. You don't know why. You, you, you just know to persecute me, the one who's calling out to these people in their drunkenness, their pornography, their, their ungodliness. And oh yes, the Bible says, by the fear of God, men depart from evil. Oh man, you don't know what love is. It means I love and rebuke and chasten, the Bible says. You don't understand, love. No, no, you, you know to persecute me. You don't understand. Yes, you are. You're coming up against me. You're coming up against my mission out here. You understand? You don't understand what the prophecy. You don't understand what Jesus did. If you turn that off, no, no, I'm not here to talk to you. Entertain your 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 lukewarmness. The Bible says the lukewarm be spewed out of my God. Yes. I wish you were hotter, cold, because you're lukewarm. I'm gonna vomit you out of my mouth. Jesus said. You don't like people who are hot for Jesus. You don't like people who are on fire for Jesus. We're bold. I think it's wonderful. you know what the problem is? What the problem is with these lukewarm preachers out here is they're they're afraid that they're gonna offend people by rebuking them for their sin. Their friendship with the world is what it is. Friendship with the world is on the team. No, the Bible says that you may be able to convict those who contradict. It's in the Bible. Oh, you understand. You guys love to persecute me. This is probably the most preaching you're going to do right now is try to persecute me, the preacher. You won't, you won't rebuke them, but you sure? You sure will come up to me and try to rebuke me for what? For preaching the scriptures. The Bible says be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That is what I'm doing here tonight. The Bible says, rebuke, those who rebuke the wicked shall have delight and a good blessing will come upon them. Proverbs 24, verse 25. But you guys are ashamed. You guys are ashamed of me. You're ashamed of what I'm doing out here. It's sad. It's sad. I, I fear for the for the professing Christians. You're, you're showing people hate. You're oh, you know, are you a preacher? Are you a preacher? Are you a preacher? Do you know how to preach? No, no. You then go get your bullhorn and reach some souls, man. But quit trying to persecute me. Quit trying to persecute me for coming out here preaching the Bible and warning the wicked. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, him we preach warning every man. You're lying. The Bible says, him we preach warning. I am here warning every man. The Bible says, the Bible says, when I say to the wicked, oh, you can learn something if you listen. Have ears to hear. Have ears to hear, young man. Because the Bible says, when I say to the wicked, you shall show surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, it says that same wicked man will die in his sin, but his blood I will require at your hands. I don't want these people's blood on my hands. I don't want your blood on my hands. The Bible says, let no one despise you. No, I am here today with the authority of Jesus Christ. Jesus sent me out here with the authority to preach the word of God, to call sinners to repentance, not to come out here and to itch your ears or pat you on the back. I call you to the baptism of repentance, the baptism of fire, the baptism of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. No, I'm preaching right now. You can talk to these guys back here. I'm not stopping the preaching so I can talk to you guys and try to give you 15. You know, you know, you know it's, it's impossible. I can give you guys 100 verses to describe what I'm doing here tonight, but it's not enough for you. I get that. You don't understand what I'm doing right here. That's fine. I'm not here to convince you of that. Then fine, then go do it, but don't come up against me. Don't come up and try to stop what I'm doing. I'm not saying you are, but that's what, you know, don't stop me from preaching. Go on and open and preach. No, I'm here to preach right now. i got a mandate. The Bible says, you know, preach the word while it is day. I'm not, I'm not have to stop preaching. I don't have to. I'm here to, look, look, look. I'm not here to have a conversation right now. I mean, you know, I said you can talk to him. There's other people here. Why don't you guys understand? You guys don't understand what the purpose of the preaching of the word is. But you see, the Bible says the word of God never returns void, young people. Oh, oh, but you know what? The Bible says that people who sin, it says that, that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. The scripture says that he who sins is a slave of sin. And he, a slave does not abide in the master's house, but a son abides in the master's house. A son, somebody who lives uh, according to the son of God. You people are not imitating the, what Jesus did when he was on earth. Jesus is not a pot smoker. Jesus is not a fornicator. 
Jesus is not a drunkard. Jesus is calling you out of those things, calling you out of your sexual morality. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. Touch not what is unclean, and I will receive you. Oh, it's unclean. Your sexual morality, your pornography, it's unclean. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord and be cleansed. Jesus Christ can purify your heart. The Bible says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Oh, it says, lament and mourn and wail. Turn your laughter into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humble yourself, young man. Admit that you are headed to hell. Show the Lord that you're concerned, that you know that you're a heathen. Oh, the Bible says, Bible says this, this is the will of God for your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you should learn to possess his own body with sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the heathens that do not know God. You do not know God when you live in sexual morality. You defraud your brother. The Bible says that you, each one of you do not defraud your brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of such. We were not called to uncleanness, but to holiness. The Bible says that Christians, born again Christians are called to holiness, not uncleanness. He who rejects this rejects not man, but God, who's given us of the Holy Spirit, young people. Do you have the Holy Spirit? You should fear God and walk in the way that is perfect. Walk in the, in, in the way that has been tried, the way of faith. Um, right now, I'm not taking questions. I'm, I'm preaching right now. You can talk to these guys. They're more than happy to talk with you. But make the questions good because we go about, I'm like, we're not going to go around the mountain all night with you guys. We want to see you guys in here. We want to see you guys be bold witnesses for Jesus Christ. That's what it's going to take. The Bible says we speak the gospel of God in much conflict, the Bible says. Yes. Yes, it says. We receive the joy with joy of the Holy Spirit. That word, it says, in much affliction, the Bible says. Oh, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. God be thanked, it says. God be thanked, yes, who leads us in triumph in Christ. That he says that he leads us in triumph through Jesus Christ. And through us, he diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Every place that the Christians go is the fragrance of God's knowledge. But you guys, every place that you go in your sin, it leaves a foul stench, a foul odor, just like your marijuana and your cigarette smoke. That's what God, he smells that foul odor. But God wants your life to be a fragrant aroma. A woman, you know, I wouldn't want to kiss her. You know, it's, it's, I'm so glad that my wife doesn't smoke. I wouldn't want to kiss a woman with ashtray breath. That's terrible. What about your money? Most of you are probably broke and you spend your last penny, your last Pell Grant check on your trip to spring break. Or you take your worst, you take your parents' money. You've taken your parents' money and you've wasted your parents' goods. Just like the prodigal son. Just like the prodigal son. I earned my money since we take go. Like no, no, that's, that's not going to save your soul. I am a Christian. Go, like a subscriber. You're here partying? No, what? What are you here doing? You're, you're hanging out here. You can't be a Christian. You're double-minded. Yes. <laughs> Listen, you can drink alcohol. No, no, the Bible says no. It says revelry is a work of the flesh. This is revelry. It means partying. You're walking in the flesh. You're walking in, in, you in drunkenness. No, no, no. That's, that's Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. If you're, if you're living in sin, the Bible says you're a slave of sin. You can't, you you're not, not going to buy the message. Do you not no, accept no. me as the prodigal son? Do you not Are you going to leave? You going to leave? You see, that's a problem. No, it's, look, look, the Bible says lay hands hastily on no man, okay? I'm not here to give you a handshake. I want you to be saved. It doesn't matter. I, I'm going to use it that way. That's fine. The Bible says don't bid him Godspeed who doesn't, who doesn't have this doctrine. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, the Bible says, you know, that, yeah, they're, they're, they're con okay. And, this is, and, and, and those who believe in Jesus are not condemned, but those who don't believe are condemned already. You see, forget that verse, right? She's condemned already because she doesn't believe. She doesn't believe right now. You're not believing. If you believe, you'd obey. The Bible says that he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. You see, you people are not obeying Jesus Christ by going into this club. It's a so you're, he, No, 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 no. The Bible says make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Romans 13, 14, young man. Yeah, the, the, Bible says, the Bible says that you shall walk before your God blameless. The Bible says the righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright. But wickedness overthrows the sinner. You see, your sin is the issue. You guys are not willing to forget sick your sin. Fear God, man. Crucify your members on the earth. The Bible says if you walk after the flesh, you will die. But if you buy the 
the spirit, put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. Put to death pornography. Put to death more masturbation. Put to death marijuana. Put to death drunkenness. Put it to death by the power of God's loving kindness. You guys are drunkards. You guys are in danger because the Bible says no drunkard will inherit God's kingdom. Not one drunkard will be in God's kingdom. An ex-drunkard, a former drunkard, a former pot smoker, a former liar. Oh, young man, you're deceived. You're deceived. Oh, you're deceived. You're following the devil into that bar. Jesus is not leading you into there. No. no the, the, Bible, the Bible says, yeah, yeah. What do you say about unforgiving? Yeah, those who don't forgive their neighbor. Very forgiving, yes. Yes, I yes, I want to be forgiven. I'm having mercy on them because because the Bible says, the Bible says that he who speaks a right answer kisses the lips. Oh, that's what the Bible says. I speak a right answer. I kiss the lips. The Bible says, speak the truth in love. I'm speaking the truth. I don't want these people to get drunk. Hey, yeah, it's love because you know what? That drunkard might get out of line and sober up and not go kill somebody in a car crash. That's love. You don't perceive it that way. Because you guys want to have fun. You guys just want to have fun. You just want to drink it up, smoke it up, sex it up. And you think, let no one judge me, not even God, right? But there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy, the Bible says. I come into the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. And you need to understand that you're condemned already in your sin, young people. Your sin has condemned you already. That's what the Bible says. Yes, this is the condemnation, young man. The light came into the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil, Jesus said. Whoever practices evil, it says, does not come to the light. Let's, oh, you reject the word of God, you're not a Christian. You just, you just proved it yourself. You reject the Bible, because I'm quoting to you Jesus' very words. That's yes, what Jesus said. That's not the word of God. Open your Bible to John chapter 3, verse 19. Light came into the world. Men love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. I know the word, man, but you guys are hypocrites. You, you, you reject the Bible scriptures. For what? For what? Because you want to you bring a different gospel? I mean, what's the point of this, man? What's the point? You're judging yourself, man. No, no, yeah, I am. I wonder these judgments. I don't want to be walking in darkness and living in evil. You're right. Instead, what I do is I come to the truth that my deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. But when you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, you are a judge. You're judging me. That's what you're doing. You're judging me for my preaching the Bible. Because I want to call sinners to repentance. Oh, no, no, the Bible says to warn every man. Who's every man? To warn every man, the Bible says. Oh, you don't understand judgment, man. You're under judgment when you when you judge me. You're a hypocrite. You're not, you're not judging righteous judgment. The Bible says... How will they know unless a preacher is sent, okay? What did Jesus preach to the masses, huh? He said, if your hand causes you to sin, it'd be more profitable for you to cut your hand off and cast it from you. It'd be better for you to have one hand to enter into life than having two hands to enter into hellfire, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. It'd be better for you, to, if your eye causes you to sin, to gouge your eye out and cast it from you. It'd be better for you to have one eye to enter into life than to have two eyes to enter into hellfire. Where the worm does not die, where the fire is not quenched. Yeah. If your foot causes you to sin, cut your foot off and cast it from you. And it's better for you to enter into life being maimed, blind, or lame than having two eyes, two hands, and two feet to enter into the into the hellfire. Where the worm does not die, where the fire is not quenched. You know, that's the problem. You guys aren't warning the people about their sin or if they're using their members to sin. The Bible says, do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. If you're not under law, you're under grace. Shall we sin that we are under law or under grace? God forbid, the Bible says. Do you not know that a man is a slave to what he obeys, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? I'm a slave, I'm a slave to righteousness. Oh, the Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction, for correction, that the man of God may be perfect and entire, lacking no good thing. Yes, yes, how will they know unless they send a preacher, huh? The Bible says preach the gospel to what? Every creature. Who's every creature, young man? Only the church? Is it only the church? Is it only the people who have faith in Jesus? No, it's everybody gets the gospel. Everybody. Preach the word to everybody. That's what I'm here to do. You guys need the word. A lot of you professing Christians need the word. A lot of you professing Christians are out here in sin. You're living in sin in the secret of your life. I know you are. There's a lot of hypocrites out here. Don't, don't Look, I'm telling you. The Bible says judge yourself to see if you be in the faith. Must you be a castaway? I just want to talk to you first. Oh, uh, not right now. I'm preaching. Okay, well, do you, you remember the day you got saved? Uh, 
Uh, I remember that. Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, I, for me, for me, it was a process of repentance. But I remember when God, you know, led me to out of my sin. I have a testimony of being led out of my sin. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not having conversations right now. God telling me to preach. You can talk to these guys back here. I'm just not stopping because this this could just eat up the whole time out here. People, you guys have a lot of questions, but. You know, if, you, if your mission is from God, then go do it. Go fulfill it. I'm here to fulfill the mission God gave me. God told me to come out here and warn and exhort and to cry out to the lost people. These young people don't understand the danger you're in. People die all the time in their sin. Drug overdoses, you know, broken marriages, divorces, you know, liver cancer, stomach cancer. You know, I hear stories all the time of people getting addicted to pain pills addicted to to depression pills and what happens they die at a young age and they get judged by god and they're not going to enter into heaven in their sin they're not going to go to heaven in their sinful ways nothing that defiles will enter into heaven the bible says nothing that defiles nobody who practices a lie or loves and practices a lie the bible says blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life which is in the paradise of god but outside are the dogs the sorcerers the sexually immoral the idolaters all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The second death, a lake of fire, folks. Man, oh man, it's terrifying. You think about dying in your sin and being cast out into hell, burning with brimstone. That's the end of this, this lifestyle of your sexual immorality. It's lake of fire. The lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Don't have your part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Fear God. Quit looking at pornography, professing Christian. Fear God. Wake up. Wake up. Yes, it's true. There's a lot of people that you guys are rubbing shoulders with. And they're not all, they're not all genuine. They're not all there yet. Now, I pray God gives you grace. Yes, I pray that God will convict your heart. But the rubber has to meet the road at some point in time. You know, the Bible says, do not be a, you know, you know, you know, you, you, the Bible says, don't be unbelieving, but go on. It says to perfection, walk in a way. Of the, of the righteous. The way of God is, is, is straight and narrow. Now, the way of the world is wide. It's broad, it's common, it's profane. It's evil. It's evil? Oh, folks, the way, the way you'll, Jesus will never let you down. He'll be with you through trouble. He'll be with you through, 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 uh, through tribulation, anguish, and pain. May I ask you a question? No, I gotta preach. Go ahead, one question. It just sounds like, it's just the tone of your voice and it sounds like you're judging. That's like, that's the uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving what the Bible says about judgment. So do you sin? Uh, as a Christian, Christians do sin, but not like these people. The, but there's, there's a Christians do sin, sin, but they don't. Well, yeah, the Bible says if we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of God. So there's levels of sin. Of course there is, yeah. The Bible says I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I keep your commandments. I'm a Christian. I refrain my feet from every evil way. I, I walk in a pattern that is sound. I walk in a way that is, that is above reproach. The Bible says, if your righteousness does not exceed the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Your righteousness. The Bible says, he who does what is righteous is righteous as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. Okay? I'm not walking in sinful patterns any longer. I, I, I don't practice a lifestyle of sin. I hate and abhor sin and evil. I cling to what is good. Yeah. The Bible says, they, the, the, guy, the Bible says be a testimony. Be a light in this dark world. I'm being a light in this dark world. Yes. Yes. Terrifying. Yes. You civil Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, young man. How will they know unless a preacher is sent? How beautiful are the feet of those that bring good news? It's good news that it's good news that people would be awakened their consciences, just like John the Baptist. He was out of love too when he said, Brood of vipers, right? Brood of vipers, snakes, vipers. Who told you to flee the wrath to come? Nobody here wants it.